why the big move yesterday in, in bonds downwards or the move up in rates, I should say. Let's put it over here. A little something to watch there out of the corner of your eye. Why the move down in bonds yesterday? Bank O Japan. So I'll give, I'm going to give you the uh, the full scoop, and then I'm going to give you the uh, the usable, tradable scoop, which is what's what's actually important. You don't need to know this first part, so don't don't stress yourself if it doesn't make a ton of sense. So, uh, so uh, yesterday it was leaked that uh, BOJ um, was open to the idea of widening their yield curve control. Probably already lost half of you here, but you don't need to know this. Widening their yield curve control from 0.5% to 1%. Okay, what does this mean? Yield curve control means that BOJ was buying any and all AGBs. when they got to plus 0.5 percent what does that do it has the effect of keeping interest rates artificially low artificially low why because the boj is acting like a sponge absorbing any and all selling that occurs around that level. But what's the consequence? It's always a price to pay, right? The consequence is the yen gets kicked in the nads. They were, this thing really doesn't want me to type NADS. NADS. So it's a balance. Do you stabilize the or do you stabilize the yen? Right. Effectively, they use newly printed yen to buy their own bonds. Yen goes down, rates stay low. Not a problem. And keep in mind, this is not what you need to know. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna tie this all together very nicely at the end. It's not a problem unless you have inflation. Japan has not had inflation in let's say 30 years so it wasn't a problem but now they have inflation so they have to make a decision do they keep supporting the artificial low rate of 0.5% or do they buoy the yen and chill out inflation? It's getting long. Um, so yesterday they decided to slightly skew towards booing the yen at the cost of widening the spread on the bonds. So I'll, I'll cut it there. 
that's as mechanical as it needs to be. But let, let's start boiling this down. What does it really mean? It means that rates go up. It also means, and very importantly, that the carry trade, if you don't know what the carry trade is, that's your homework for the weekend. That the carry trade, I explain it briefly, traders borrow, let's say short, yen, and long other currencies. They then use this money to go buy crap, stocks and bonds in all world markets. So effectively, and is a source of cheap money for the world. This is why it, it's bigger than Japan because of the, the carry trade. So I'll just explain that verbally because I'm kind of tired of typing and I'm a shitty typer. I never learned how to type actually. Um, <laughs> somehow. Uh, so the carry trade. So the yen is so cheap. I go borrow yen at let's say, let's just make up a number. It's not going to be correct, but just let's just keep the number simple. Let's say I can borrow yen at a cost of 1%. Okay, so then I sell the yen. It cost me one percent to do that trade, right? I, I sell the yen. It cost me one percent. I use that yen to go buy, let's say, U.S. dollars, which then I can go and put into the bond market and make five percent, right? So I just created a free four percent trade, right? I'm borrowing in uh, in yen at one percent. <laughs> borrowing at 1%, it cost me 1%. I then take that yen, I put it into dollars, and then I could put that dollar, those dollars into, uh, let's say, T-bills or whatever, right? And the T-bills pay 5%. So 5% minus 1%, 4% free money. How many people do you think are doing that? Do you like the idea of free money, risk-free? Probably, hedge funds do too. How much leverage do you think they're doing? They're using all of it? <laughs> Probably. So I'll, I'll cut it there because I'm getting, I feel like I'm getting a little bit boring, but effectively, let's, let's, get, to the, let's get to the meat here. So, so what does it mean? Well, rates go up around the world. Money in general becomes less cheap. Less cheap money equals less YOLO trading. Less YOLO trading equals less energy for world markets. Okay, so then let's let's finish it up here. How do you track this? To keep it simple, just use the yen futures. 6J. If 6J spikes higher, that is a very risk off signal. If you are bullish, you want to see 6J lower consistently. All right, so we're all good there. So all you have to do is just one additional piece of homework. Um, check out the 6J. If it looks like, if it looks like it's going lower, you're good. If it looks like it wants to spike higher, it has a setup. Let's say it has a perfect setup with a squeeze and everything you look for, be a little bit more risk off. So now 6J or the yen in general um, should be something that you uh, that you look at, right? In the same way that I show you the HYG, right? 
HYG because, you know, it's not something we follow all the time, but, you know, generally speaking, if the market's going higher, you want to see HYG confirm that. Now, if the market's going higher, you want to see HYG confirm that by also going higher, but then you now will need to see, H, uh, if the market goes higher, you need to see uh, the 6J ideally go lower or stay flat.